GOG has finally pulled Hitman 2016 from its storefront and it's admitted its user base was correct and they shouldn't have released it in its current form with online DRM on a DRM free store. Although it's a step in the right direction, there's a lot more that remains unanswered and leaves a lot more that remains to be desired. This was posted on their forums in the same thread that I covered previously and GOG has apologized with the exact words, we have let you down. Since the game had no activation or online connection required to play notice highlighted on its GOG page as the first thing you would read and see under the game's flamboyant title, the game's core feature is the increased dependence on the online connectivity due to the existence of escalation missions, elusive targets, user-created contracts to unlock new equipment, starting location in the map, and mission scores, which defeats the purpose of the offline play. If you can't unlock and play the game how it's supposed to be, and this is a thing that they should have already looked at day one. And all of this led the user rating to drop to 1.4 out of 5 stars, which showed the disappointment of the release, and started countering the review bombing by the removal of those reviews. All these debacles reflect poorly on CD Projekt Red, as they've already done similar problem with the Cyberpunk's problematic launch and it took them weeks to also come to a conclusion about what to do with the hitmans, which was removal when it could have been resolved with the game patch. If a developer can think of selling the game on a different storefront then they can definitely write a small patch for that new storefront and to cater it to its audiences. The bigger question is why did they even list the game in its first place at the price tag of $60 when the subsequent releases Hitman 2 and 3 allow previous games to be played in the newer game for a similar price tag? All these questions are unanswered and probably will remain unanswered for the future just like the previous controversies with the CD Projekt group. But the history of such unresolved events only pinpoint towards a darker, more corporate and anti-consumer future, misaligning with a bird which is looking more marketing. And people boycotting GOG and CD Projekt's projects is a sign of a bigger problem brewing that needs to be handled with care. And that's it for this video. If you guys have the same question and thoughts as me, or you have something to add, feel free to comment down below. Hit the like button if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Subscribe if you haven't yet because it really helps my channel, and in return you don't miss out on my future content. And as always, thanks for watching and... I hope you all have a great day. Peace out.